Another application of redox reactions that involves supplying electricity from an outside source is electroplating. Electroplating is a really handy technique. It's a way of coating a metal with another metal. Now why would you want to do that? Why would you want to take a perfectly good metal and then just go in and coat it with another metal? Well, there's a couple of reasons. One, to protect a metal with a thin outer layer of a more durable metal. You see, some metals have very good structural strength, but they don't hold up to wearing very well. They'll wear away over time. So what you do is you coat that structural metal with another metal that wears better over time. For example, until 1982, pennies were made entirely out of copper. But in 1982, the price of copper spiked so that the cost of making a penny went way up. But a penny's still worth just a penny, right? So what they decided to do at the U.S. Mint was to turn from using pure copper for pennies to using zinc for pennies. Now zinc was a fairly inexpensive metal. The problem with using zinc is zinc is significantly more active than copper is. And therefore, it's not as durable. It's going to be you know, exposed to the elements. It's going to corrode faster. It's not as good a metal to use from a wear standpoint. So what they do is they actually electroplate the zinc with copper. The pennies that you have that are more recent than 1982 are copper-plated zinc. It's basically a very thin coating of copper around zinc. Think of it, if you will, as the chocolate coating on a thin mint cookie. Mm. Or it can be used for decorative purposes. For example, to coat a common metal with a precious metal. Why would you want to do that? Well, things made of precious metals have one drawback, namely, uh, they're really expensive. So what if you want the look of silver without the expense of silver? You could take, let's say, a utensil set, forks, spoons, knives, and instead of making them completely out of silver, you could silver plate them. That way you'd get the beautiful look of silver without the incredible expense. The same thing goes for jewelry. You can gold plate jewelry because with gold currently over a thousand dollars an ounce, it's going to cost you a lot of money to make it out of solid gold. So how do you silver plate an object? Well, it's actually not too difficult to do. All you need is a source of direct current, a battery. You also need a metal to plate with. Now, if you're going to silver plate, obviously the metal you're going to use uh, is silver. You also need the metal that you're going to plate. For example, if we're going to silver plate a ring, we need a ring. Then you're going to need a solution bath that contains metal ions of the metal you're trying to plate with. For example, if we're trying to plate with silver, we need silver solution like silver nitrate. The nitrate is a spectator ion. Okay, so we have all of our ingredients. We have the metal we're going to plate with, a solution containing that metal's ions, the object we're going to plate with, and a battery or some other source of direct current. You connect the object you're going to plate up to the negative end of the battery. Always. You'll see why in a minute. And you connect the metal you're going to plate with up to the positive end of the battery. Remember, the negative end of the battery is the anode, and the positive end of the battery is the cathode. And electrons come out of the negative end of the battery, and they go into the positive end of the battery, just like that. So here's what happens. This is so cool. Silver has its electrons forcibly removed and brought into the battery. Now, when that happens, the silver dissolves and forms silver ions. Silver ions, silver ions, they dissolve into solution. And then, the electrons come out of the negative end of the battery and onto the ring. Now remember, metals have no use for electrons, but metal ions, being positive, are attracted to those negative electrons. And the silver comes over and goes, oh, what's going on over here? And boom! As soon as it hits that electron, it turns into solid silver, which begins to coat the ring. Silver has its electrons stripped away, goes into solution, goes over to the ring, and as soon as it touches the electron on there, bam! It turns into solid silver. And over time, the silver builds up. The thicker you want the coating, the longer you let this thing run. 
Here's why it works. On this side, the AG0 is turning into AG plus 1, and its electron is being stripped off and thrown into the battery. The oxidation of silver metal. Those silver ions dissolve. Electrons coming out of the negative end of the battery go onto the ring, where the silver ions pick them up. Ag plus 1 picks up the electrons from the battery to form Ag0. So all you're doing in electroplating is you're moving silver from one place to another, moving it from a source to where you ultimately want it to be. We could copper plate this ring. We could use a strip of copper and a solution of copper nitrate, and we'd get copper forming around the ring. 